to get back, uh, DJ, I want to get back to this conversation about Nick Beasler. And as we were just showing you, the six, the situation where Justin Glad, after five center backs played, he got his opportunity. Oh, he got him. He got, he got him. him. Albert Rusla oh, bends it around oh, the wall. Near post. Oh, boy. 3 0. Oh, boy. What a goal from Albert. In stoppage time, decide to why not. It ain't right, but it ain't wrong. DJ, it ain't right, but it ain't wrong. What a goal that is from Albert Rusnak. Oh, he's just done him dirty. Look at the way, the technique, he scooped that ball around the two defenders. And Zach McMass never seen it coming, and once he does, it's too late. Oh, I wanted to see. I just want, oh, okay, a little hang time. Give it to me. He knows. With a little wink right there at Beasler. Oh, boy, what an introduction, and welcome <laughs> into the Mike Pecky Coaches Show. I'm your host, Brian Dunseth. He is Mike Pecky. Mike, how you doing, man? Doing wonderful. Listen, hearing your call, that goal right there, I love it. Passion, I love it. I heard the Egyptian announcer from Egypt when yeah. Mo Salah scored his first goal today. Yeah. Have, you, have you heard that yet? I did, I did. It's like two minutes long, and I don't know what he's saying, but it's <laughs> unreal. You have to, maybe you have to dive into something like I, that. I think that was as excited that I've been in a long, long yeah. time. I don't know how I can take, because my voice. <laughs> oh, is that a shot across my bow? No, 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 excited no, no. you've been in a no, long no, time? No, 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 because when you see a goal like that, it's one of those moments where you, you are at a loss for words, because it's just such a clean goal. And yeah. the way our angle was in the booth, I could see his body shaping up. And yeah. obviously, the goalkeeper, Zach McMath, is kind of keeping an eye on where the service might be. But I could just tell the moment he took that little sidestep that yeah. he was going for it. Yeah, uh, we were on the bench, and we were, before he took it, me, Tyrone, and Freddie were like, I think he's going to shoot this <laughs> near post. And we were like, and I just sat down after that. I was yeah. like, oh, gosh. Well, some, something happened at the end of Saturday's match that, uh, that caught our producer, Tyler's, attention. We asked to speak with Nick Beasler after the game. He was fantastic, I thought. And according to the story that was told to me, Mike Pecky, you weren't too thrilled about the ask. Um, you may have even uttered the phrase, you guys are going to be the death of me. Uh, so let's dig into this. Why did you not want us to talk to Nick Beasler after the game? <laughs> All right. It's like, it's sort of like, it's sort of like when my parents come to visit. Okay. And my son wakes up, who's 13 years old, and he takes two steps, and they're like, oh, he took two <laughs> steps, oh my goodness. I mean, come on, you know? Yeah. From my point of view, and, and this is a good conversation to have, from my point of view, a young player like Nick, you know, last year, player like Justin Glad, Brooks when he got, Bofo yeah. when he got there. It, obviously, I understand on one aspect that you want to talk to him then, he just played his first professional game. Yeah. So why, I, I just don't, I don't That's why we thing. want to talk I to know, him, I know, but, but you have to look at it from my perspective. I know, I know. That he gets in front of the camera, everyone's patting him on the back, saying you played a great game. Yep. I need him to play another good game. I need him to play another good game. And I'm still in the, in the mind frame of these young players of, of I'm trying to figure out how they work. Can they handle this? Mm. So, of course, I overreact. But do you understand my point? No, I get it. I get it. And, and from, I guess, from the, the viewer's standpoint, Here's this kid who's taken the path less traveled. You got the fifth overall pick a few seasons ago, never makes his professional debut with Portland, uh, finds himself in the U USL and working his way back up. And, and a lot of us, I think, in his position back in the day would have been out of a job, wouldn't even yeah. have had an opportunity. And yet here's this kid, digs down, puts his head down, becomes the captain of Real Monarchs, has played 80 games at USL level. And then when he gets his opportunity, much like Justin Glad got his opportunity a few years ago, uh, he is now this quote unquote sixth choice. Yeah. And he steps in and he's fantastic and he gets the shutout. And fantastic? That's why he was fantastic. Okay. Right. You want to celebrate the kid. Okay. And I get it. I, I get the mentality. I can, only, I can only imagine having that locker room and looking around and trying to figure out kind of the, the psychological balance of game in, game out, uh, yeah. game training sessions, accountability, high level expectations. Prove it to me that you deserve to be here each yeah. and every week. Prove it to me that I cannot force myself to leave you out of this starting 11, but we just want to celebrate the kids every once in a while. I get it. And, and I think a lot of it has to do, to be honest with you, subconsciously and in the back of my mind from years past, 
I was a part of Freddie Adu's first year in this league. Mm. 2004, mm. I was his teammate when he got introduced before he touched the ball. He was the savior on the commercials with Pele, all this type of stuff. And he had making a million, million, bucks million dollars. <laughs> I mean, he'd come to, school, to work every day with a different Rolex and a beautiful car. He was given everything before he really earned, earned it. it. Yeah. And he knows that now as well. So I think that, do I think that's going to happen to Nick, to Justin? Of course not. Mm. But I think there's a small part in my mind that flashes back to that and seeing that circus, how it unfolded. Um, and, and I kind of cringe, and I just want these guys to stay grounded. Can you understand from our perspective no. that trying to understand <laughs> the psychology? Yes. Not, not to celebrate the performance, but to understand the psychology of a yeah. young kid. Because we, we, I think we found ourselves, especially in the English version of, of broadcast here in the United States, that... We, we tend to go to kind of the same players. Yeah. And especially here in Salt Lake, I, I look at a guy like Alvaro Sabarillo, who was in, historically a fantastic player for RSL, but his inability to step in front of the camera yeah. uh, on our broadcast, either a pregame or a postgame, I think led to a lot, of, a lot of fans being indifferent towards him because they couldn't relate. They, couldn't, they saw the person, they saw the player, they saw the number, they saw the performances, yeah. but they didn't understand who he was as a human being. And I, I think that's what, like with Joao Plata. Yeah. When Joao first got here, I'd ask him, Joao, come, come do English, because I'd see him dancing and partying and doing yeah. this whole thing. And he'd be like, no, <laughs> my English, no good. And I was like, I will give you the questions. You write them down, you memorize them, do whatever you have yeah. to do and we'll build your confidence up slowly. And, and that's what I, I love seeing guys that, that succeed. And for us, being able to kind of showcase that to, to the fan base. I get it. You asked, me, you asked me at the beginning of that long question. Um, I get it. I completely get it. But let me ask you a question. Did you guys interview Nick after the game? Yeah. We got it. I, have I ever? My point is, is that, <laughs> yes, I have that reaction. <laughs> Trey knows we have a good debate. Uh -huh. and, and at the end, I'm going to do what's right for the organization yeah, and yeah. everything. And yeah. nine out of ten times, it's I could complain, but, but that player will be in front of the camera. Uh, game broadcasts. Um, I know you go back and you watch the games. I'm kind of actually tearing up just thinking about this. I know you go back and you watch <laughs> the matches. Do you watch the matches with the volume on? Depends. Or Depends on which broadcast. That's a great question, by the way. There's many games that I put music on. And just watch. Because I can't sit in silence, but I can't hear certain things. You know? And I'll be honest, your broadcast, I watch. You know? I watch. And it's yes. because... it's because and Here's what we'll get into when we talk about broadcasters. In between... During my hiatus, hmm. in between jobs, I called, I think it was seven or eight Cosmos games. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember. I did some a yeah, I did some serious XM with you. So I got to see that side, even though I was around it for 13, 14, 15 years, but to really see it up close. I have an utmost respect for what you do. I have the utmost respect for what everybody who steps in front of a camera to call a game, whether it's any sport, hmm. okay? Where it gets a little fuzzy is... And, and, and again, I know I'm wrong in this scenario, but it's just, I guess maybe it's part ego. Uh, if I'm being honest, I guess it's part pride. I guess it's whatever it is. You, no matter what you say, you could rip apart our team. I might not be happy, but I respect it because mm. you've played at a level. And I know this has been a debate for a while yeah, in different yeah, sports. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, that's why I'm saying I'm partially I'm wrong. Where I have turned the volume off is somebody who probably was plugged in from a network. I don't want to say the network or, or whatever, a major network that usually does hockey or something. And he's stepping in, he's criticizing, and he's saying this, criticizing a coach's choice, criticizing this. I could take criticism. Yeah. You know, I've taken criticism from the best of them, from the biggest and the best. Uh, but there's something along the lines of respect that I know that the person criticizing me has been at a level, didn't mm. read a manual, didn't study up on the internet about a sport and all of a sudden he's calling as, as a professional. Yeah. So I respect the hell out of what broadcasters do, but there's a fine line for me on, on who can say what. Okay, so I'm... It's I'm, wrong, I know, but that's... No, no, because deal. you bring up a good point, because I'm always... Uh, because I've been a part of some of the media training for the MLS players and going and meeting with the players and, and kind of trying to help them navigate what it means to have personal yet not super personal relationships with the media, meaning don't give them a reason to say a bad word about you. Yeah. Figure out a way to... Have, have a relation. Hey, how are you, man? Good yeah. to see you. How's the family? How you been? And have a smile on your face because then the next time they have the opportunity to slay you, <laughs> they might hesitate just for a split second. Not yeah. to say you'll get away with it, but you might hesitate. But one of the big talking points from the player's perspective was the opponent's television broadcast. And what their, what their big gripe was is, number one, 
they didn't feel like the opponent's broadcast was doing the due diligence. No, the homers. And, <laughs> and they became homers. Yeah. And it, it, they asked me about my opinion, and I just said, I think you do a disservice when you are just an open-ended homer. It's one thing to celebrate goals. I, I'm, I'm okay with all that. But when it's blatantly clear that what you're feeding to your audience is is a false narrative, yep. not only are you, not only you, I think you're you're doing a disservice to the job itself to because the sport a lot of people, and, to the league. But, and on top of that, you're 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 creating a false a false sense of security, mm. false information yep. for your fan base. Like if some guy <clears throat> punches somebody in the privates and then you say, oh, I don't see anything <laughs> there. What's he going down for? It's pretty obvious yeah. what he did, but the whole idea of being a homer is it you've been on both sides now. How how do you find like because I call the game right down the middle. I yeah, try to say do. like a national broadcast yeah. where I'm a neutral in both. Um, how how did you see the game when you were calling it? Well, first before we get to that, I felt like I was your son here and you were saying you got hit in the privates. That was that was a, <laughs> that was an exclusive Becky well, show I, there. I that was very I, key, yeah, very very uh Capital of Thailand. Correct. Capital of Thailand. Very right. good. Um, how did I see it? I had no allegiance to the Cosmos, mm -hmm. you know, and that made it a lot more easy. If if I was calling um, for a team that I've been a part of for a while, I know that I would stay true to who I am and call it how I see it. But let me give you an example. You you brought it up earlier. Do you listen? Do I listen to the broadcast when I rewatch? I rewatch every game two times at least. Um, the first time I rewatched our game, uh, the, the volume was low because right after the game, because the wife was sleeping, blah blah yeah. blah. It was one in the morning. Because um, you can't sleep, right? Because I can't sleep. I can't sleep either. <sighs> It's terrible. So then the second time I watched it, which was yesterday, um, I watched it full again. I actually had the broadcasting on, and the broadcast that I got the feed from MLS Live was the Colorado, Colorado. Rapids people. Mm -hmm. And their color analysis, who I know very well, and I have a good relationship with when I see him, and I think that he's somebody that I respect his opinion. This is my point, is that I literally had a text message written out after the game to him this long. And I erased it at the end. I'm like, this is, what am I doing? You know, what am I doing with my life? You know, but I respect him because all he kept going on about was a 3 nothing win. Now, do I think we played phenomenal? No. But he kept going on about before the red card. Colorado had control. Colorado, I, and it, what he said was, which drove me crazy, which is why I started writing tweet. The text was, he started writing, he started saying, I want to see go back and see what the possession was. They completely outpossessed RSL. I go right to Opta and Instat, which are the two major stat keepers in the world of soccer. Yeah. We were at 64% up until the red card. <laughs> so, and that's what I, and, and it actually gave me a little something good to go in and talk to the team about before yeah. our video session. Guys, listen, after the game, they had like three or four corner kicks because they really put it down on our end, this and that, blah, blah, blah. We had 64% possession. Mm. Now we went to the next thing is what we did with that possession a lot of the time, which was a lot of fluff in the back, but we kept possession. My point I got out of line there, uh, off no, no, cue no, there a little right, bit. Yeah. But my point is, is that I just couldn't believe what I was listening to. You know, I mean, if you have an opinion, that's fine. But I mean, you, you've called how many games? You've played at the highest level, and I respect the heck out of them. This is just one little blip, and that's yeah. why I erased the text message. But I'm like, how off were you? They completely outpossessed us. We were at 64% up until the red card. Then we went down, I think, to 63% for the rest of the game. Did you know that their coach played the same narrative? No, I didn't. Yeah. Well, and, and isn't it interesting that a game like that, you can create two narratives. Yeah. You can say, man, for the first 20 minutes, we were all in there. We were dominant yeah. on the road away. And then we were undone by the red card. Or you can sit there and say, from your guys' perspective, they played well defensively. Yeah. They were strong. And then the game opens up. And they had zero <laughs> shots on goal. And the so, game opens up at the end in the final 10 minutes. So th my po to get back to my point is that how do you define there's a fine line between saying this team dominated this team or this your opinion or yeah. this team dominated but I'm not a huge stat guy but the stats do tell a lot yeah and when I see zero shots on goal and 64 percent you know <laughs> I'm saying okay they might have in certain areas put a little pressure on us this and that and, yeah. and had the ball a little bit but I don't know so my point is is that I respect the heck out of what people do when they go down and they do the broadcasting but I, I tend to look at who's who's saying it have, have have you ever gotten mad at me for something I said? Is there anything like off the top of your mind where I mean, every Tuesday besides yeah, well, every Tuesday? I mean, besides Tuesday, I mean, I can't think of one to be honest with you. I, I'm sure I have. Okay. I'm sure I have. But uh, to, to 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 end this for me at least, take it a little farther than broadcasting. Just people who make a living on commenting on, mm -hmm. in our sense, Major League Soccer. 
I mean, I walk to friends of mine who are constantly texting me or, or, or when, I'm, when they're over with the computer, look where you are on the MLS power rankings and what it says. And I'm sitting there going, do you know who writes those power uh -huh. rankings? Somebody that I said before, somebody that either played casual rec soccer or maybe some sort of college <laughs> soccer, read a couple of books and become a professional at it. Oh. So, and and I, I hate to say it, but that's how I feel. Yeah. So why are you reading that, you know? And yeah. uh, so that, that, that's how I feel about broadcasting and people who talk about soccer, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shout out you to uh, Sam Stay School, by the way, at MLSsoccer.com. Oh, <laughs> I didn't say any names, I didn't say any names. <laughs> Don't worry, Sam Z's can totally handle it. Hey. Uh, because we've had so many friends of the show join us over, what are we now, six or seven weeks in, we should probably introduce uh, or bring back someone who's going to start his home opener just right around the corner, Real Monarchs head coach, Mark Briggs. Briggsy, my man. No, no, I'll get first today. Because you guys do that. You guys have an elaborate handshake. And oh, you should probably sit over here, man. You're more, you're more whatever. important to me oh, yeah. in the moment. He doesn't. It's because he doesn't have his earpiece. He didn't bring his earpiece. Today. Running it in I'm the not, I'm not ready for the earpiece. No, no, no. I'm not ready for it. Uh, so welcome back. Thank you. Uh, how are things? I know when you look at the start of this season, um, it's been pretty good to you guys, considering the amount of matches that you guys have been away from home as the new stadium's been finished. Yeah, we've, we've not started off too bad. Uh, obviously, we've had four away from home, played five and played four away. Um, and we've got four... Good results, obviously four wins, and then we got beat by Tampa at the weekend, mm. uh, which was, which wasn't a bad thing. I think, like Mike said, sometimes the younger players need to kick up the backside, so to speak, and we got it in Tampa. Um, how excited are you to officially open Zions Bank Stadium? Yeah, it's been it's been a long time coming, so uh, <laughs> it uh, it'll be nice to play in like our own stadium. Yeah. Hopefully, we can get a good amount of people in the stands. And it should be a nice little uh, tight atmosphere. You guys have been out there for a while, training uh, daily uh, when you guys are in town. What does it mean for this group to kind of have now something that it's own? I mean, we have Real Salt Lake, we have Utah Royals, we have the Academy, and now with the Monarchs opening up their own stadium, just having their own, I guess, their own piece of what this big puzzle looks like. Yeah, no, it's, I think it's huge for, for the Monarchs um, players. To, to be able to say that they have their own their own stadium, they have. <laughs> okay. I don't know who did that. I don't know who could possibly have done that. Okay. Who did that? That's decent to be fair. That's amazing. I think oh, he's going to be at the opener. Yeah. I heard the rocks coming. Um, when you when you look at this when you look at the start of the season, how, how and Mike and I have kind of talked about this a few weeks back. How do you compartmentalize knowing that this opener at some point is inevitable, yet there's so much work to do before you get there? Yeah, I think, you know, you have to take, try and take as much of the attention away from the home opener, so to speak. It's just, it's just a normal game. Mm. And uh, we have to try and keep the focus on, on that on the, for the whole group, uh, both myself, and my staff and the players, uh, we play Las Vegas Lights and we need to get three points. But Mark, that's the one thing Mark does well, you know, out of, out of a ton of things. What he does well is he, he has such a grasp on his players, you know, and, and he knows when the right time is to really push their buttons, to really calm them down. And that's the one thing, uh, aside from tactics, you know, because he's very good at that. But that's yeah. the one thing I, I like about Mark's uh, managing style. You know, it's not going to be, the moment's not going to be too big. They're not going to, they're not going to take for granted what they have, you know, Mark's got them. Got him down. Uh, Briggsy, you... Um, Going to get embarrassed you, are, anyway. I'm are, are, you, embarrassed. Are, you, are you envious of the Las Vegas Lights jerseys, <laughs> the Zappos? Oh, God. I, I'm, I'm glad we don't wear them. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, El Chalice and, and Las Vegas. Freddie Adu, we just got done talking about. Yeah. What, what kind of, I guess, big picture, what kind of problems do they pose uh, for a group that's relatively new getting together? Yeah, no, they've started off very well. I think, I think they may be undefeated, to be honest. Um, so they've, they've got a lot of experience. Uh, they obviously play with a South American style mm. and trying to keep possession of the ball. So uh, it should be a good game of football in that regard. Um, it's going to be a difficult game. Uh, they, they do actually play Friday night um, against San Antonio, so they may be tired coming in on Monday, and we might have to take advantage of that. Uh, atmosphere is always something that's really important. How, how does this fan base here create the atmosphere that you guys will need week in, week out, 
when you play at Zion Bio Stadium? I think even last year playing in Rio Tinto uh, when we got three, four thousand fans, even in a big stadium like Rio Tinto, uh, the atmosphere was still quite good. So I'm hoping that uh, the fans turn out and we fill Zion's bank and still bring that same intensity and that same great atmosphere. Yeah, it's incredible as we see now kind of the video of the stadium itself and the backdrop and just some of those views. And there's grass, look at there's grass on there those is. fields over there, there as well. Yeah, it's coming in, it's coming in. <laughs> right around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> um, nearly there, nearly there. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. Good luck this weekend. Uh, but something you missed while you were gone. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap things up by showing our favorite submissions from our hashtag Ooh. challenge from <laughs> last week. Team uh, tweet number one comes in from Bianca. For the first match of the Rocky Mountain Cup, I'm just going to sit quietly on the bench for 90 minutes in my sweatpants. Failed Pecky tweets. Do you understand that? No. She's you. That's oh, your. That's ah. you. Oh, so she's, she's, okay, I you're got wearing you. sweatpants and you're just going to sit there for 90 oh, minutes. Okay, that's pretty so, funny. Okay, so, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Uh, so tweet number two from Caleb. You've reached the voicemail of at Pecky Mike, uh, coach of at Real Salt Lake. I can't get to my phone to check my tweets either, figuring out what's wrong with the freaking printer. Leave a message. Social media is good for something. Hashtag Faith uh, Pecky tweets. I'm and not getting me of these. Huh? And, and the <laughs> lastly, I think you'll get this one. Uh, buddy, hey. Failed Pecky tweets. Your butt tweet the other day. Yeah, I, mean, I got nervous. <laughs> Holy cow. I got nervous. I, it, it was the first Russians. time I picked my thing? It was the Russians. I'm telling you right now, I started getting real nervous. I like right away turned my phone off and I was sitting there like, whoa, what's going on here? Did you turn it all the way I, off? I you turned it all the way off, turned it back on, and that's when I sent out whatever the next thing was. That wasn't me, you know? That's and right. I was trying to set it up because if anything else comes out, you oh, know, yeah, yeah, I want yeah. to put it out there. It's not me right now. So I mean, the kid, were the kids so. not home? It was no, just No, no, it was just me. You're just chilling. Just chilling. Chilling, making some breakfast, and all of a sudden I look down and I see people are responding, "Hey, hey, buddy, you know, like, what the heck is this?" You know, this? Elliot Fall is pretty technologically advanced. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> he's not at that level. No, no, he's not. He's not You're that. welcome, Elliot. Hey, that'll do it for this week. We'll see you in Vancouver on Friday for Real Salt Lake and in Harriman for the Monarch Stadium grand opening on Monday. See you next week. Okay, guys.